In today's Lightroom Classic Masterclass tutorial, we're going to be going over the lens correction panel, the best way to remove chromatic aberration problems as well as distortion and vignetting issues in your photo just using Lightroom Classic. And I'm going to start right now. Now, the lens correction panel found inside Lightroom Classic is designed to fix three optical problems that your lenses can cause. Now, some lenses are better performing than others, but no lenses is 100% optically perfect. So what the lens correction panel does is creates profiles for every single lens so you can get the best results possible. But sometimes it still doesn't work and you're still suffering from chromatic aberration, distortion and vignetting. So in today's video, we're going to go over everything that you need to know about the lens correction panel so you get the best results possible when editing your photos inside Lightroom Classic. Right guys, so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and open up Lightroom Classic. Now at the moment we're in the library, so go ahead and select the photo that you'd like to edit in this episode and then go ahead over to the develop panel. And once we've done that, in this episode we're going to drop down to where you can see it says lens correction. Now lens correction changes three optical problems that your lenses can suffer from. And as a general rule, the more expensive your lens is, the less optical problems it should suffer from. But that's not always a 100% a definitive rule. You can get some very cheap lenses that are almost optically perfect, and you get some very expensive lenses that are, shouldn't be expensive, put it that way. But as a general rule, the more expensive you go, especially in the Canon ecosystem, if you go for an L series lens, it should suffer from less optical problems. Now inside lens correction, it is split into two different sections. You've got profile and you've also got manual. Now profile, think of it like the automatic settings that you've got inside your camera. It's a way of ticking a box and basically fixing a problem. A manual allows you to be a little bit more customizable of exactly what it does and how it does it. So inside profile, you've got two buttons. Everything else is grayed out until you select these two buttons. The first button is called remove chromatic aberration and the next button is enable profile corrections. Now remove chromatic aberration kind of does what it says on the tin. It removes chromatic aberration. But firstly, let's talk about what that is. So we've got this photo here. This is a great example because it's quite a cheap lens that I used. If we go ahead and zoom in at 400%, you can see we've got this purple fringing line on the exterior of that high contrast edge. Now, this is my brother. So obviously his face isn't purple on the edge and it's the same with his glasses. And if we go over to the wooden post, you can see instead of it being purple, it's got green fringing and it's the same problem with the kind of light hanging down. And that's mainly because the lens isn't optically perfect. It's an old Canon 50mm f1.8 that I was testing at the time, and it does suffer from quite bad chromatic aberration. Now, what we can do to realistically remove this in an automatic fashion is to simply go ahead and click that button. Now, if we go ahead and zoom in, if I do the before and after, as you can see, it's done an okay job, but it is definitely not 100%. If I do the before, and after, again, it's not absolutely perfect. Enable profile correction basically enables a profile to fix distortion and vignetting. Distortion is that barrel and pincushion distortion that you can sometimes see on my lens reviews, as well as vignetting is the darker corners surrounding the photo. So if I go ahead and move out, if I go ahead and do enable profile corrections, you can see that the photo all of a sudden brightens up slightly as well as it changes that ever so slight distortion, especially if you look into the corners. So this is after, that's the before and after. And when we go ahead and turn it on, you can see all of this becomes live. So you've got the make, which is a Canon. You've got the model, which is the Canon 50mm f1.8. And then you've got the profile correction, which is it actually accepting, which is the Adobe Canon 50mm f1.8. So what you want to do is make sure that your make and model matches up with the profile. You've also got at the bottom here, distortion and vignetting sliders. Now these sliders are a way of digitally cropping in on your images to fix either distortion or vignetting. And we can slide this, for example, over to the right. This will actually add in or remove less distortion and we can actually go the other way as well. These don't really make a massive change, especially when it comes to vignetting. You can see it actually makes the photo basically slightly brighter or slightly darker, but it's a way that you can customize the automatic settings that the lens profile provides. Now again, you can always change this. So for example, in the make, as you can see, we've got loads of makes that we can do. So if your lens doesn't actually appear, you can actually 
automatically select it. Same with the type of lens. As you can see, there's loads of options on here. So for example, let's say we shot it on the older lens, we can actually enable that profile, but because this is the STM lens, we can enable it there and it, as well as enable profile. It's only got one option because there's only one of these lenses, but there might be a Mark II, Mark III, or even Mark IV enabled within your profile. Now, this is a quick way of doing it. The problem is it's not always 100%. So let's take this photo, for example, there's still color fringing in this photo, even though we've clicked remove chromatic aberration. For a variety of reasons, you may need to go into manual mode. In this example, we just wanna remove chromatic aberration, but maybe your lens profile doesn't appear. This is when we need to use the manual settings. Now, manual settings is split into three different sections. Distortion, defringing, and vignetting. Distortion, again, kind of does what it says on the tin. Now, if you go ahead and increase it, you can see we're basically making it more pincushion, and if we decrease it, we're making it more barrel distorted. So you can see we can kind of balance it out. Now, the problem with this is if you go for the minimum, you can see that we've got these white edges appearing, which basically means we've now got white transparent pixels in our image. Two ways of fixing this, don't be so extreme, so you don't go all the way, so I would go for about there, I would say, if you wanted to remove that. Obviously, in this case, it's fairly flat profile. Or what you can do is if you do need to go for an extreme look, you can go for this crop. So if you go ahead and click, it will actually constrain to that image. So it doesn't matter how far we zoom in or how far we zoom out, it will always or basically digitally crop in our image to make sure that there's no white pixels appearing. Now, a good way to work out if you need to have remove or add distortion is have a look at the horizon, see how straight it is. At the moment, you can see it's very, very pinkish distortion. Everything's kind of being sucked into the middle like a black hole. So what we can do is remove that until you've got a fairly straight horizon. So I'd go for something around uh, about here. So a very small amount. If I go ahead and just turn off that crop, you can see there's a very small amount, but I would probably say if I drew reduce it back to zero, that's almost perfect. The next section is called defringe, and this is what removes that chromatic aberration. Now, chromatic aberration can appear in either a purple color or a green color. And this specific example, the photo I'm using, it actually has both. So what we can do is go ahead and zoom in. You can see we've got this purple fringing here. Now, as you can see, we've got a purple amount as well as a purple hue slider, and then we've got a green amount with a green hue slider. You've also got this, which is an eyedropper tool. Now I'd recommend using your eyedropper tool to basically select the color and then you can manually adjust it. Now, of course you can do it all manually, but it's just a quicker way of doing it. So what we can do is click on that eyedropper tool and then you want to hover over where you can see we've got fringing. It comes up with a little magnifier so you can see exactly where you are selecting. We'll go ahead and click like so. As you can see, it does remove it, but it's not still perfect. So for example, we've got the amount slider, we can increase that, but you can also increase the purple hue. So we can go ahead and make it a little bit more purple. There we go, so that's now really removing it, as you can see, but if we adjust it further to the kind of orangey end than the blue end. So really what we've done there is we've removed a lot of that chromatic aberration in the purple. There's almost none there now, which is really good. So if I do the before, if we go ahead over to this side, it's quite bad around here. And then if I go to the after, you can see it completely removes it. So let's try it over with the green section. So what this green section here, we'll go over to the eyedropper tool. We'll go ahead and select that green hue, go ahead and click. And as you can see, it removes it and it's done a pretty good job straight away. But again, we can still adjust it by changing the amount slider as well as the green hue slider. So we can open these up we can move them around. So if we move them over towards the blue, you can see they've kind of reappeared again. So if we move it over towards the green, it actually completely removes it. So we'll bring that around, bring that back until you are happy with the result. And you can see all of that chromatic aberration has now disappeared, which is really nice. The last section is all to do with vignetting. Now vignetting is basically like that darker area that you can see in your photo. So for example, if we drag it over to the right hand side, we're making the photo's edges brighter. And if we move it over to the left hand side, we're making the photo edges darker. Now, to be honest with you, this doesn't really make a massive difference. I personally would recommend going into the effects panel to either add or remove vignetting because you've got a lot more control of the midpoint and the feather. So for example, here, you've only got a mount and midpoint. 
or if I turn off lens correction and go down to effects, if we got to go to our post cropping vignette, let's say you want to add in a vignette, you've got controls like midpoint, feather, roundness, and also highlights, as well as you can go into highlight priority, color priority and paint overlay, something you can't do inside lens correction. What I would specifically use for lens correction is to correct the image, not add in an effect necessarily. So as you can see, you can control all three fundamental things that basically your lens can suffer from. And you've got great control over defringe. Don't forget that eyedropper tool, which is really handy, as well as you can control the amount of vignetting found in your photo. So it's a very subtle change, but you can definitely see it appearing, as well as your distortion factor. And again, a quick tip for that is making sure that your horizon is straight. Again, for example, we can see that horizon's really bent, or if we go the other way, you can see it bends the other way. So you can really kind of customize it with that. But of course, a quick and easy option is to make sure that you've got your lens profile connected. Because if I do the before, and after, you can see it pretty much fixes all of those problems straight away. But you have to make sure that your lens profile exists. Sometimes I work on a brand new lens, like an NDA lens that's not actually out on the market yet. Lightroom Classic obviously isn't going to have that lens profile, so it's not something I can ever add. Or for example, maybe you're using a really old 1950s Russian lens. Then again, the likelihood of that having a profile inside Lightroom Classic is incredibly slim. So it works for most of the brand new lenses out today, but if you've got a really old lens or a lens that's not currently out on the market yet, you're not gonna be able to rely on your lens profile, then I'd recommend going into manual mode to make sure that basically your lens is absolutely perfect when it comes to chromatic aberration, vignetting, and also distortion. Well, thank you guys for sticking to the end of this video. I hope you guys found it helpful and informative. Now, if you'd like to learn any more about Lightroom Classic, I've got my masterclass series you can find in the link in the description. Or if you're more interested in learning about Photoshop or just photography in general, make sure to go ahead and like, comment and subscribe and make sure to ring that bell notification so you don't miss any of my latest videos. I've been James for Photo Fever and I'll catch you guys next time.